So in this video, we're going to continue the Riemann sum approach, but extend it to a function of two variables. The previous video, we did the Calc 1, Calc 2 approach for a function of one variable. In this video, we'll consider a function of uh, two variables. Let me switch my pen here. Different thickness here. Oops. Okay. That's better. So let's consider the function f of x, y. The first example was just a simple function of one variable, and at that it was a linear function of one variable. So let's consider a function f of x, y to be ax plus by. And let's make this a little bit easier by choosing a is equal to 1 and b is equal to 1. Okay, so we have a function f of x, y. Now we're very familiar that this is the function for a plane, so I'll just sketch that over here. This is the formula for a plane, x plus y. This is just a sketch. What we are considering in this problem is that we are going to have some region D down here in the XY plane. D is the region, okay, in the XY plane that we want to find the volume below this function but above that region D, okay. And so we are asking ourselves, what is the area under here, the volume under this function, but above that region, okay? So again, let's take a special case, special case of the region D, okay? And that region, I would just like to choose, you know, maybe a rectangle. That rectangle would go from, say, maybe A to B, and maybe on the other axis, the Y axis, it would go from C to D, right? So the region that we want to consider is this region, okay? Let's make it even more special by just choosing A to be zero and B to be one, and C to be zero and D to be one. So now I just have a nice little rectangle from zero to one, okay? And this is the region D that we would like to use. Okay, now the idea here is to extend the Riemann sum idea. So essentially what we're going to want to do is to grid, grid this region up, evaluate the function at the grid points, find the height of that function, and then have a little area piece down here in the base, and then we would like to compute the volume of this little cube. So if I kind of zoom in on this picture a little bit, you're gonna have a little piece of your domain here, D. You had a little rectangular piece, you wanna find a point in that domain, right? You want to evaluate the function at that point right, which would give you the height, and then you've got that little region, D down here, and you had the height of the function, and then you had the area of the base, right, so this little volume would be the function evaluated the point in the base that you picked, and then multiplied by the area of the base, and the area of the base in this case is just this little region here. So this is a hint of the idea of what we would like to do. This is the Riemann sum kind of approach, and essentially then you would just kind of add up a bunch of, you know, you would move to another piece of the grid, right? find a point, find another point, and then add up all the volumes of those cubes. And the function could be different heights, of course, so you're getting you know, a bunch of cubes of different heights. And you want to add up all those volumes, and if you do enough of those, um, 
rectangular regions that have volume, you will get, and add them all up, you will get the volume, an approximation for the volume under this function, but above that region D. So let's just kind of do kind of a quick example. Let's kind of do a special case. Uh, if you choose N is equal to two regions, these are your sub intervals, that means that we want to kind of grid up the interval 0 to 1 in both directions. You have two directions, so you have to grid it up in both directions. That means we want to split this problem up into 1 half, 1 half, and so you'll have four little grids here. Okay. So um, that means that we need to have four endpoints, so I'm always going to choose the right the extension of the right endpoints, which means that you want to move up. So this is in Calc 1, you just have one direction to go in, right? Right. In Calc 3, you have two directions, so we want to go right and up. So that means that I want to choose the upper, upper right point of each cube, of each little rectangle. So there is this point, the upper right of this first rectangle. Um, here is your second rectangle. Choose the upper right. Your third rectangle, here's the upper, oops, sorry, third rectangle, here's the upper right. And then the fourth rectangle is the upper right. I will show you why I'm numbering them like this in a second. So those are your upper right, so if you wanted to find an approximation to approximate the volume, right, I would just find my function evaluated at one half comma one half, and then multiply by the area of this first uh, box here, and that would be one fourth. I would add that to the function evaluated at, let's leave our x variable a half and then move up one more step, so that'd be one times a fourth, okay? And then add on the function evaluated at one comma one half, one comma one half times a fourth plus the function evaluated at one comma one times one fourth. Okay. And you can evaluate these numbers as well as I because the function because the function f of x is x plus y when you add up the numbers for this approximation, you will get uh, one half plus one half times a fourth. So there is the height of the box at the point one half one half. The function evaluated at one half one will give you one half plus one times a fourth. There is the height of your box. Here is the width, I'm sorry, the area of the base, one fourth. And then you continue on this fashion, you'll get one plus a half times a fourth plus one plus one times a fourth. Okay. And you would compute some number. Okay. And so that is the Riemann sum. This number is the upper right. Riemann sum okay. of the function f of x plus y. Okay. So this number only approximates approximates the volume. So what we would need to do then is kind of what we did in the Cal problem one problem. We want to compute the number of boxes 
the limit as the number of boxes goes to infinity. Right? So we want the number of our boxes to go to infinity. Well, the problem is, is that we have two dimensions here, so I need to try to take this formula and kind of write it in summation notation. But there are two directions, right? So we know that you can move right and you can move up. So let I be how many steps you're going to move in the right direction, and let J be the number of steps that you're going to move in the y direction, so up. So we're going to have two summations in this problem. You're going to have a summation, j going from 1 to, say, n, the number of rectangles. You're going to have a summation, i, going from 1 to n. And you want to evaluate your function at um, i divided by n plus j divided by n times the width of the rectangle is 1 over n in one direction and 1 over n in the other. So this is the area of your base. And here is the height of your box. Okay. And somehow we need to tackle this double sum. So just so you can see, for example, how this double sum works, uh, if you just take n is equal to, say, 2, for example, Okay. you would have the summation j going from 1 to 2, the summation i going from 1 to 2, f i over n. See, not much changes except the number that you're putting. And I'll just write this as 1 over n squared. Okay. So when i, the way you tackle this is that i starts at 1, right? And then when i starts at 1, j can go from 1 and then 2. So this is what you do. You write down the i equals 1 step first so that we give you the function evaluated at 1 over n. And then when j is 1, you'll get, oh, and n is 2 in this case. And then when j goes to 1, you'll get a half. And then you'll get 1 over n squared. So this is the i equals 1, j equals 1 part. When you get to i equals 1, j equals 2, you always need to put a plus sign. So it would be the function evaluated at 1 half plus j is 2. So that would be 2 over 2, and that would be 1, 1 over n squared. And I think you can see here why I labeled the boxes I did above, because this would be j is equal to 2. So I fix my x-axis, go to the first box, and then I move up in j. So this would have been box number one, and then this would have been box number two above. Right? I guess we can go look at that. So we let i be one, that was at a half, and then we went j equals one, j equals two. So we had the first and second box. Okay. And now that's only two of the terms, so you need to then let i going to two. So I'm now moving in this sum to i equal two. And you will get the function evaluated at uh, two over two. And then j can be one. j goes to one, and then you'll get a half, one over n squared, plus the function evaluated at i is still two but then j goes to 2 also. And that's the way this double sum works. This is i equals 2, j equals 2. Okay, And that is the case that we had above. And you can compute that number, and that would be an approximation. Okay. So what we want to do is approach that summation for any number of rectangles. So again, the Riemann sum approach is going to split into two problems. You want to do a limit as n goes to infinity, and then you're going to a, do a double sum. Okay, I usually do j on the outside, i on the inside, i going, i telling me how to move to the right, and j telling me how to move up. And then I need to evaluate my function, in this case, my function f of x 
y is x plus y. And our interval, I'm sorry, our domain D was just this rectangle from 0 to 1. So that's our domain D. So I just need to evaluate it I over N plus J over N and then 1 over N squared. 1 over N squared is the area of the base. And we simply need to find the height to get the volume of the little box above that point. Okay, uh, sorry, not a good box, but you get the idea. So this would be the height. All right, so let's continue in the two steps to first tackle this double sum and then do the limit. Okay. So the first step, I'll just focus on the inside here and not keep writing the limit. So because our function is x plus y, I'm just going to I'm sorry, this is an n, summation i equals 1 to n. And my function is just repeat, oh, this is f of x comma j over n. So uh, x is i over n, y is j over n, so I'll get i over n plus j over n times 1 over n squared. Okay. I need to tackle this limit, it's pretty, pretty straightforward, I believe. Uh, leave the J alone for the time being, and let's just focus on this inner summation. Well, you'll get I over N cubed, just doing a little bit of algebra, J over N cubed. Okay. Remembering your properties of, okay, we're not to the J summation yet. Remembering your properties of summation that this will split into two pieces, i equals 1 to n, i over n cubed, plus the summation i equals 1 to n of j over n cubed. Sorry, my pen's not quite working. There we go. But... J equals 1 to n. Uh, this is an I summation, so n is a constant. So that will bring 1 over n cubed out in front of the summation. And then I just have the summation I equals 1 to n of I. This term, J and n, this is an I summation. So J and n are constant, so you'll bring both of them out in front of the summation. And you're just left with i equals 1 to n of 1. Okay. So you have two pretty straightforward summations that you need to do there in the parentheses. Right? We know that the summation from the first example, that this summation is n times n plus 1 divided by 2. And now we're going to get something that has only... Uh, ends in it, okay. plus j over n cubed, and then the summation from 1 to n of 1, that just means 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus, keep going, n times, that means that you have n of those 1s, so that would just be the summation from 1 to n of the number 1, would just be n of them. Okay. And now you have finished the i summation, but you still have one other summation left. Okay. And we do the same thing before. This is a, we'll split this into two pieces. You'll split this into summation j equals 1 to n. n times n plus 1 divided by 2n cubed plus the summation j equals 1 to n of j over n squared. Just simplifying the n over n cubed. Okay. Now, again, this has n's in it, and this is a j summation, so I can bring everything that doesn't have a j out in front of the summation. And I get j equals 1 to n of 1 plus 
This has a J in it, but the N squared can come out in front of the J summation of J. We know that, again, this is the summation of J equals 1 to N of 1, so that summation was just N. And summing from J equals 1 to N of J is N times N plus 1 divided by 2. Sorry about my handwriting. N times N plus 1 over 2. So we have this term here, 2N cubed. That thing on this right here was N. And then I have 1 over N squared times n times n plus 1 divided by 2. Okay. All right, so this simplifies a little bit, I think. They have an n and an n, so that would be an n squared. You have an n cubed down here, so you should get n plus 1 divided by 2n. This term is, uh, what, n squared plus n divided by 2n squared. Just simplifying this a little bit because we know we're going to have to compute a limit now. Um, this would be 1 half plus 1 over 2n. And this would be 1 half plus n over n squared. What is that? 1 over 2n. Okay. So 1 half plus 1 one half plus one half is one, and this would be one over n. So that double sum we just did, j equals one to n, summation i equals one to n, of adding up all the boxes, i over n for x, j over n for y, and then the area of the base was one over n squared, that is the end of step one. We have basically taken, added up all of our boxes, but we want n of them. We have found a nice formula that if you were to take n is equal to say eight boxes, for example, and do the upper right evaluation. So if we had zero to one, zero to one, and you split that into eight pieces, right? and evaluated at all the upper right corners, right? And then found the height and found the boxes, right? And I'm sure your book has some much nicer pictures for this, but if you found all the boxes and added up all the volumes, that area would be one plus one over eight, which would be nine over eight is the area, okay? But as you take a larger number of boxes, you take the limit as n goes to infinity of that double sum, f of i over n, j over n, 1 over n squared, that this term will go to 0, and you just get 1 for your answer. Okay. So this quantity, this limit of a double sum, uh, extends to calculus three because each sum becomes an integral symbol. I want to evaluate my function f of x and y. And then for every direction, dx and dy, you had two directions. You have to add a D for that. That is the area, that's the length in the x direction, the length in the y direction. This dx dy makes your area. Here is your height. And then you want to integrate over D. So this symbol, this double integral, if you want to know what that means, it means exactly this process. Do the limit as n goes to infinity of that double sum. So I think what we can say at this point is that if we were to do the integral from 0 to 1, the integral from 0 to 1 of the function x plus y dx dy, I like to put little limits on here. This is the x is equal to 0 to x is equal to 1 
This is y is equal to 0 to y is equal to 1. Right? That this number is equal to 1 because we did the double sum limit. And so what we have just shown here is that the area underneath the function x plus y but above this little domain D here, where D is the rectangle from 0 to 1, 0 to 1, that the part, the volume below that plane, that this volume all in there has a volume of 1. And that is the simple approach. It's a pretty simple function, pretty simple region but the idea will carry over to do double sums. And the idea would be to how to skip doing the limit definition of the integral and getting down into, say, a fundamental theorem of calculus. And that would be the subject of class for the next week or so.